Hi friends, I'm Chuck and this is my good friend Bob from Ecuador. So what are we doing today, Bob? Well, we're going back to our model. We're taking a look at Jesus and this time we're going to see the power of prayer in the life of Jesus. All right, so let's go to the scriptures and we're going to take them one by one this time and Bob's going to explain the context and then we'll talk about it. So here we go. This is Mark 1.35. In the early morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went away to a secluded place and was praying there. Okay, so at first glance, Jesus is just doing his early morning prayer with his cup of coffee, but there's a lot more going on here. What's happening, Bob? Well, Jesus has gone to Peter's house, Peter and Andrew's house, where he found uh, their mother sick and healed, healed the, or excuse me, healed the, the swagger, the mother-in-law. And uh, all of a sudden, people are bringing all these people to the house, and Jesus is healing them and, and casting out demons, and there's just a big crowd forming. And then we hit our verse what does Jesus do? Does he play to the crowd? Does he gather everybody? No, nope. he heads up and goes out by himself to pray. And, and it's funny because he's up there and all of a sudden the guys, his guys come up and say, hey, everybody back down there is looking for you. What does Jesus do? Well, that's fine, but let's go on to the next village and share the good news. Yeah, yeah. So instead of being consumed by the tyranny of the urgent, Jesus puts his priority where the real power is. He, he's praying early in the morning. Work till late at night, got up early in the morning. So that says a lot to the priorities that Jesus has. All right, let's go to the next verse. But Jesus himself would often slip away to the wilderness and pray, Luke 5, 16. All right, so the context of this verse is that, uh, once again, Jesus is incredibly busy with ministry. And sometimes I feel like we spend so much time trying to advance the kingdom, we spend very little time with the king. Not so in Jesus' life. Anything to add to that, Bob? I think, again, we just, a uh, situation where he had crowds of people around, and in a very much off opposite mindset to what we see in a lot of modern day Christianity where people want crowds. Uh, Jesus is more concerned with checking in with the Father and always looking for his will, always looking to continue doing what the Father's will is in the situation. Great. And it keeps getting better. Let's go to the next one. It was at this time that he went up to the mountain to pray, and he spent the whole night in prayer to God. So what's going on? What, what causes Jesus to pray all night long? And I think it's maybe a combination of two things. We, one of the obvious is he's about to pick his 12 key guys, and he wants the Father's input. He wants to know that he's on the right track with these guys. But he's also just come out of an experience where he wanted to heal someone and the religious people were so upset that he was breaking one of their little rules mm. that they were already plotting to kill him. Mm. Just showing how horrible religion is in relation to the heart of Jesus. Yeah, and so Jesus sees the writing on the wall uh, it's time to start transitioning to the new leadership and start training them because my timeline is set. And so uh, very, very interesting that this would come uh, as the persecution increased and the need for competent leadership 
increases as well. So and he's starting that multiplication, putting it into practice. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Bob, I'm sure you've never chose the wrong guy to invest <laughs> in, uh, but I sure have. And, uh, you know, you, you pick the guy that looks the best, uh, you know, talks the best, runs the fastest, and lo and behold, that's not the guy, you know? And I sure wish I would have prayed before I had chosen, laid my hands on that guy, so to speak. So, yeah, that has happened. <laughs> <laughs> so we need to look at that Jesus model. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's take a look at the next passage here. So some eight days after these sayings, he took along Peter, John, and James and went up on the mountain to pray. Luke 9, 28. Again, it's one of those times Jesus is, has just fed the 5,000. He's had this miraculous feeding of actually 5,000 men plus women and children. And, and there's that crowd thing again where everybody's all excited about him. And uh, sure enough, he's going to head out again, go up on, on the mountain to pray. But he's also has just asked his disciples, who do you think I am? And Peter has answered, you're the Christ. You're the one we're looking for. You're the Messiah. And he's just announced to them what the plan is, that he's going to be killed, but he's going to rise again on the third day. And he said that some of them would see the kingdom of God before that time. And then he takes Peter, James, or takes takes them up on the mountaintop. And Peter, James, and John is, is three three kind of key guys. And there's the transfiguration where he literally, they get to see him glorified, shining his clothes like lightning. And there's Moses and Elijah and they're having a chat on the mountaintop. Mm -hmm. That's good. And I think one of the things that kind of surprised me about this passage, rereading it, is the idea that Jesus wants these three guys with him to pray with him. This is a an example of corporate prayer in Jesus's life, which is, uh, I hadn't seen that before, the emphasis there. So pretty cool. All right, last verse. And he left them again and went away and prayed a third time, saying the same thing once more, Matthew 26. All right, so obviously this is in the Garden of Gethsemane, but you have some points to make in the context of the whole going away and praying. I think this is just such an amazing passage. You can read it over and over, and it still is striking. Jesus knows what's coming. Mm. He knows he's going to be crucified, one of the most painful things anyone could possibly experience he's brought his guys with him to to in corporate prayer prayer encouraging him stand with him in this time of trouble um he says his soul is is sorrowful even unto the point of death and he's he's asking him to watch with him and then he says to the father father if i can put this aside that would be great but if this is your will let it be done and this is repeated in several times. And even as his guys fall asleep, he's standing there in prayer and, and not letting that discourage him completing the Father's will. Yeah, Deb recently uh, mentioned that we have been praying for my healing. More her. She's the more persistent one. I'm kind of just getting it through. But she made the point, I'm begging God. I've been begging God for so long and I just need to keep on praying. And, you know, if the Son of God feels like I'm going to pray three times about this, that gives us permission to pray a thousand times about it. You know, God doesn't get weary of us coming to him and asking that our father would do good things, you know, so.
So and and Deb's not alone in praying for that healing for you, Chuck. I yeah, can tell you thank that. you to Bob and Mary and so many others that might be watching this video. But he so, also says something interesting. He says, watch and pray that you don't fall into temptation. Mm -hmm. And I think he's calling us to be constant in uh, especially in in really difficult times yeah to not to not fall out to stay in contact so bob what would be three tips that you would give someone on prayer <laughs> um number one that i see over and over again in these passages is that jesus went to a solitary place mm. Uh, he got alone without distractions, moved away from the crowd, got to a quiet place. And that tells me that he wanted to do some listening, <laughs> that it wasn't just me, just him talking. <laughs> it wasn't just me showing up with my list. Um, I think I think that's a key. Um, and it was a priority. He didn't let the crowds distract, distract him. He didn't... Um, he had one man, one one father he wanted to please. <laughs> and mm. it wasn't important to him that he wanted to please man by doing what they wanted from him. Mm. Um, number three, stay at it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say that's my biggest tip. You know, uh, move from discipline to delight. And prayer in the beginning, uh, most of us start as discipline. You know, it's okay, I gotta get up early, I gotta pray, and it's, I gotta. But you stay it long enough, and it's gonna turn into, I wanna. And that's a big shift from, I gotta to, I wanna. Uh, because it's it's rich it is rich but you gotta you gotta go through the process in order to get to the promised land so to speak amen all right we love you god bless you and until next time keep following jesus